In this video we will create a teleport GUI that provides multiple buttons the player can click to teleport to different areas. As you can see I've created six different areas that the player can teleport to. I'll start by creating a part for each area that the player teleports to. Think of this part as a spawn location. The player will teleport on top of this part. So I am going to resize it to the size I want. So I want it to be maybe 4x4, four four, just quite small. And I'm going to move it to the middle of my little zone. Of course, if your zones aren't perfect squares, just put them wherever you want. I have just made perfectly square. And your zones don't have to be touching or anything. They can be wherever you want. You know, you can have one here, one over there, one up down there, one up here, you know. If you don't want the part to be visible, go into the Properties tab under View and Properties. Turn off Can Collide and make the transparency set to 1. Now, make sure our part is anchored, so go to Home and Anchor with the part selected because we don't want to not have it anchored because otherwise it might fly off the map. Now, I'm going to duplicate this and place it into each zone. There we go, so now I've created six different teleport pads. Now, one of these areas is most likely going to be the area the player spawns in. If not, that's absolutely fine. You don't need to follow this step. But I'm going to have this light blue one here, the area that the player spawns in. If your player spawns somewhere else that doesn't have a teleport pad, then don't worry about this bit. But what I'm going to do is delete this pad and go into model and add in a spawn and just place it in the middle. Again, it's quite big. I don't want it to be visible. So I'm going to scale it down to the 4-4 that I had earlier. I'm going to remove the decal from inside of it, make it can collide off, and set the transparency to 1. Just double checking that it's definitely anchored. This now means the player will spawn onto this one by default. Give each part a distinct name. I will just use a numerical system. So the spawn location will be uh, 1. The second part will be 2. The third one will be f uh, 3. And so on until you have all of them named. I'm only, I've am only i only got six. So I say only. That's quite a lot. I've got six locations. If you want more, go for it. If you want less, go for it. Now what I'm going to do is select every single one. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Right click and group as a folder. I will rename this folder teleport pads. And this is just a folder containing all of our teleport pads. Now let's create the GUI. For more tutorials on Roblox GUI, please check out my Roblox GUI 101 series. You can find the link to that in the description. So just to quickly skim over that, because this isn't the main part of this video, I need to add a screen GUI, and then in here I want to add in a text button. This text button, I will do some customization to make it look how I would like. I'm going to make the background a nice light blue color. Just because I like that, I think it gives those Roblox um, sort of those ro that Roblox effect. I will make the text white. I'll make it say um, teleport to zone one. Or something like that. I will scale it. Might even make it for Doka One because that is my favourite font at the minute on this uh, uh, on the studio. I'll make the size 0 .10, 0 0.10, and then manually resize it because otherwise we'll get some uh, scale offset errors uh, on different devices. And at the minute, for now, I'm just going to put it somewhere on the side. I'm not going to worry about focusing it into the middle of the screen. I'm just going to put it somewhere on the side. Now that we've created our first button, I'm just going to do some finishing touches that I want to do. Now that that text button's done, I'm going to add a frame into our screen UI. This, I'm just going to rename to the button background, or BG for short. And this will just be the background for where our buttons will go. I'm not going to do much with this. It's just so I can mainly lay these out nicely. So I'm going to put this on the side. So this is the whole area these buttons will take up. So for me, they're going to take up this area here. I'm going to give it a background transparency of 1. However, I'm going to add in a UI stroke, which I'm going to give, it, give a thickness of 3. I'll also make this blue, just once again to fit that Roblox vibe. In fact, I'm going to pick screen colour and pick the colour of our button, just so it matches. And then I will add into this button background a UI... We're going to add in a list layout because we want to list our buttons. And then I'm going to add the button to this background. Now you'll see it's resized and it's gone really small. We don't want that. So I'm going to go onto the list layout. And I'm going to add some padding. But before I do that, I'm going to make the horizontal alignment in the center. I'm going to make the horizontal flex none. The item line alignment, I'll just make that automatic. The vertical alignment, I'll go center. And the flex none. Now for the padding, we'll come back to that actually, let's just fix the button first. 
So I'm going to, I just need to resize it. So go 1010 for now. So now that it covers the whole area, I'm going to rename the text button. I'll just call it uh, area 1 BTN or button for short. And this will be our first teleport button. Now I will duplicate it and name this one area 2. And I'll do this for all six areas. Don't worry about the sizing on the left right now. Now that I've done that, I want to change the text on each one to say teleport to, uh, zone 2, 3, 4, basically so it corresponds to the name. So I'll just do that quickly. Now I'm going to do this quite a manual way. I'm going to first of all ignore the padding and select all six buttons. And now I'm going to go back to the size and just change the Y. I'm going to scale it down until they all fit within the, the box. So there's six of them. So let's go for point two. Uh, we still, it's still, it still goes outside the outline. Let's go for point one. Okay, now it's far too sort of small. Let's go for point one five. Okay, that's all right. We've got a bit of room, which is what we want. And now if we go to this background, let's, uh, not the background, sorry, the list layout. Now if we go to padding, the scale, if we make that point one, it's going to be really far apart. If we make it 0 0.01, a little bit further, a little bit closer, obviously. Uh, but just play around with this until it's just how you want it. So for me, that is 0 0.2. 0 0.02, sorry, that's the perfect scale. Okay, so you can see the buttons aren't exactly in order. It goes 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then 1. So the 1 is in the wrong place. Now, unless you want to play around with all the layouts again, which I don't really fancy because you've got to do a bit of fire tuning with it. I'm just going to rename them so that they are in the right order. So area 2 is going to become area 1. Area 3 will become area 2. It, t it's, it takes a little while. Area 4 will become area 3. Then this area 1 will become area 6. And now I just need to change all the texts again. So 1. There we go. So now I've got 1, 2, 3, uh, 4. Where's 4? Four, 4. Hold on, there we go, 4, now I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, perfect. Now it's time to actually program this. So I'm going to add a local script to the screen GUI, not the actual buttons, or just the button background actually. I'll add it into, so a local script into the button background, and this will be our handler. So I'm going to store each button in a variable. I did originally try and do this into a table, but when you store it into a table, the mouse button click events don't seem to register 100% of the time, I'm not too sure why. So first of all, I'll create a local screen GUI equals script.parent. Uh, not even the screen GUI, actually. This will be the button GUI or the button background. So local button background is script.parent. Now we need to store each button in a variable. Now, unfortunately, we have to loop through each one because, as I said, you can't store it in a table for some reason. So we'll create a local button one equals button background, colon, wait for child. You could do wait for child, but I'm just going to do dot because likelihood is by the time the script's loaded in, all the buttons have. But if you do want to wait for it to load in, I'm just, I'll am i wait for area one to load in. And then by the time area one's loaded in, they probably all have. So I'll say local button two equals button background dot area two button, local button three, and so on equals button background dot area three background, oh, button, sorry. The only reason we're doing this wait for child here is because you might want to wait until all the buttons have loaded because if the script loads before the buttons, then you might get a load of errors because the buttons don't exist. But there we go, so I've done all six. No, I'm not going to worry about the wait for child. You can if you want, just go wait for child area one button, wait for child area two button, wait for child area three button, wait for child area four button, wait for area blah, 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 and so on. Now we'll store the player to a variable, local player equals game.players.localplayer. And we'll get the teleport folder as well. The TP folder is uh, workspace, colon, wait for child. I will wait for this because it's parts, like it's an actual object. It does take a bit longer to load in. So I'll definitely wait for the teleport pad folder to load in. Now I'm going to create a function uh, called button function. Uh, nice simple name. And this is where we will teleport the player. Local button function equals new function. Uh, not new function, sorry. I'm there we go, equals function. And I'm going to use area name as a parameter. So this will take area name as an argument, and this is the name of the TP pad to TP2. So TP teleport. Let's say we want to teleport to pad 3. We're going to put 3 in here and teleport to part the part named 3. Now in here, let's uh, get the character. So local character equals player.character. And if the character exists, so if character then, uh, we want to teleport the player. 
Now for R15, let's we're going to do a check for R15 and a check for R6 because there are two different versions of the avatar. If you want to see what one yours is, go to game settings, avatar, and you'll see either R15 or R6. If it's player's choice, you're going to need to do both. I would follow the code I'm about to write anyway because it is proof for all three player choice R6 or R15. So if character colon find first child humanoid root parts spelled exactly like this it must be spelled exactly like this then player dot character dot humanoid root part dot c frame with a capital c capital f equals tp folder colon find first child area name dot c frame again capital c capital f plus vector three dot new zero two zero so why are we doing this? Well, we want to check that the character has a humanoid root part, and if they do, that means they're R15. R15 has a humanoid root part. Then we'll teleport their humanoid root part. That's sort of their, their root. That is their, think of it as their primary part of their body. Everything else will follow that. So we'll teleport that, their root, to the area, to the teleport pad that we're looking for. And we're going to add two studs in the y direction because we want to spawn two studs above it. We, want, we don't want to spawn in it because otherwise we might glitch under it. We want to spawn on top of it and just fall gently on top. There we go. Now I can say else if character colon find first child upper torso then. Now upper torso is for R6. So R6 has an upper torso, R15 is a humanoid root part. Again, make sure you spell upper torso exactly how I have here with the capitalization perfect. Player dot character dot upper torso dot C frame equals TP folder colon find first child area name dot C frame plus vector three dot new zero two zero. Again, exact same as the line above, we're just using upper torso instead of humanoid root parts. Now, at the very bottom, we'll add the click event. So, button one, uh, not button function, there we go. Button one dot mouse button one click colon connect function. And in here, we're just going to call the button function. Passing in one because we want, if button one's clicked, we want to teleport to area one. Now, I'll do this, but for button two. So, button two dot mouse button one click colon connect function, button function, and we're going to pass in two. I'm going to do this for all six. There we go, and I believe that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And this should now work. Let's test it. So hit test and play. And you see we spawn on the spawn location on the light blue. Uh, we can't stand on top of it or see it. Perfect. Now let's teleport to one. We do two, three. Now four should teleport us to that purple one there, or the magenta or whatever, and it does. And then five, and then six. And perfect, so it all works, so it's perfect. So I hope you found this video helpful, everyone. That is it. If you want me to cover unlockable zones where the player has to buy the next area and only then can they teleport, let me know in the comments and I'll make this like a mini series if need be. And we can do a couple of videos on it because there's quite a few things, features you can play around with, with this. So just let me know if you do want to see that and I'll happily do it. But other than that, everyone, please leave video suggestions. Uh, in the description, there is a link to a Google form where you can suggest a YouTube video that if you like want to see something, a tutorial on something, please suggest it because I am starting to run thin on my video of suggestions. I'm starting to clear the backlog of suggestions that I've had and um, I've got a few series ideas which obviously take a while but in terms of these standalone videos I need some more ideas so please do leave suggestions. Um, I'm happy to look into every single one. But other than that, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video and goodbye.